Welcome to Podcasting Power Hour with your host, Jeff Townsend, a.k.a. The Indie Podcast Father. I'm your co-host, Greg, from Indie Drop-In Network. Podcasting Power Hour is recorded live every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitter Spaces. Every week, an experienced panel of podcasters and other experts will tackle your podcasting questions. We will, of course, put links to all of our guests and any relevant information in the show notes. All right, let's get this party started. Welcome to the most stupendous, this beer's delicious, Twitter space that there is, Podcasting Power Hour. I'm Jeff Townsend. We've got a lot of the usual characters in here. But speaking of father time, Greg will be in the co-host seat this evening. I'm always in the co-host seat. What are you talking about? This thing has my butt imprint on it. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Greg here from Indie Drop-In Network. Uh, So my job is really just to laugh at Jeff's jokes so that it's just not silent in the room for an hour. Mm. You dog. How could you say something like that? Arr. You're a funny man. Jim Mallard is with us from the Mallard Report. He's been doing them. Has it been the Mallard Report for 11 years? Like, that's crazy, isn't it? Such a creative yeah. name that I came up with, but you know. Hmm. If I could go back 11 years. Anyway, speaking of a man who's back a million years, he's the Hall of Famer, the sensual Dave Jackson. <laughs> I'm sensual now. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> Glad to be here. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you more, li- more lively here. I don't want to know how you know he's sensual, Jeff. Maybe maybe in the after hours of Podcasting Power Hour, you can tell us that story. Sounds spicy. And of course, the guest this evening, the reason that you're here, because you're not here for me, certainly. Although you may like me uh, pestering Tanner, who has no call, no show this evening. But we have Dave Jones here from Podcasting Index and the 2.0 guy. Uh, let me just be slightly pedantic. It's the podcast index not the podcasting index yeah okay well you got me there no oh, you should have <laughs> fucked up this whole I thing fucked up, yeah guys let's just re- okay, let's start over cut it cut it cut it cut it cut it cut it rewind it podcast index guy dave jones <laughs> it's great to be here thanks this is my first ever twitter space uh, it is uh yes no i've never spoken on i've listened to a few but i've never spoken on any uh, this is interesting. I'm. I mean, I had. I have no proper setup for this. Y'all. Y'all sound much more professional on my AirPods. I can uh, walk you through the proper setup if you get into the Twitter Space game big time. Okay. But no, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions about the work that you guys are doing, so I just want to give you a minute. Yeah. It's not. This is by no means an interview. Uh, and in the meantime, if you want to talk podcasting, just start requesting to speak, and we'll get you up here. But as we wait for people to come up, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing. Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we're the the, the podcast index. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, is the uh, sort of the the first product that we launched. Uh, when I say we, I mean me and Adam Curry. Uh, Adam and I go back a long time, probably about twelve years ago, is when we first met, and we were we met under the. Uh, as part of a project with Dave Weiner uh, called uh, EC2 for Poets. And that was a, um, you know, part of his OPML uh, microblogging and RSS reader product. And so we, uh, we got to know each other and ended up sort of spinning out of that project into uh, a different thing that we launched uh, together called the Freedom Controller. And that became the basis of his, uh, uh, the show notes system that he uses to do uh, the No Agenda show is basically a way to uh, to collect and re- and save articles from RSS feeds as you read them uh, all throughout the week, and then you get to show day, and you export those. You just export those articles as a big batch uh, into an outline, and then you, after the show's over, you published all that as a uh, as a set of show notes. So it's just sort of like a soup to nuts type research and publishing tool for show notes. And then, because of all that work, uh, we uh, we learned a lot about aggregation and 
you know, RSS, the vagaries and the mysteries of how to part, you know, parse terrible RSS feeds. And that uh, gave us the confidence to launch the index, the podcast index, which is a free API for uh, app developers to use to write podcast apps. So they don't have to spin up 25 servers and incur all that cost and, and knowledge uh, to do that. They can just use the, the podcast index. We run on donations uh, to make it, to make it free and easy. And then we have a, uh, a podcast uh, each week. We, that's uh, we don't ever have meetings. We, we rarely talk during the week. And so that's our, uh, that's our board meeting of the podcast podcast index every Friday at noon central time and last a couple hours we have a good time and talk about all the stuff that's going on in the podcasting 2.0 community and so that's that's the podcast index and then the podcasting 2.0 side of things is just uh, our effort to push podcasting forward uh, feature wise to build crazy new stuff that will eventually end up in every player and hosting company as new features that are not bound behind some huge company like Spotify or Apple, but that the uh, it's community led and community created. And uh, it's been very successful over the last couple of years. We've got a lot of new features in podcasting and a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. I'll go ahead and ask you the first question. I've been asked this, uh, well, well, several times over the last year, like, uh-huh. what the hell is 2.0? Like everybody, I've had people <laughs> ask me like, what does that mean? What is it? Yeah. Uh, to, podcasting 2.0 ends up being sort of incorrectly synonymous with value for value and uh, and sort of Bitcoin Lightning payments, but and that's the, but that's just one part of it. That's just one feature out of I think it's 18 different uh, tags and uh, two or three different protocols that we have now. So that that's just one part of it. Podcasting 2.0, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in this, I'm then in, in this never-ending quest to figure out how to explain it better. And so I, I think I would say I'm going to try it a different way now. I think podcasting 2.0 is is sort of like a a put up or shut up for the open podcasting ecosystem. So so it's you you've got what we expect podcasting to be, which is open, free, uh, uncontrolled decentralized um that's what it was in the beginning and that's what we expect and that's what we think of it as but then you have what it became uh, over the last you know almost two decades which is still open and free but controlled um by secret slack groups of of people of hosting companies and app developers and centralized in apple's directory and namespace so Podcasting 2.0 is an it's an open source project to try to see if what we expect podcasting to be is what it can actually be. It's it's this grand experiment um, to see if it can actually be decentralized and uncontrolled. So that the way it works out in practice is you have just all these developers that hang out at podcastindex.social and hang out on all of our uh, GitHub repos and are submitting code and coming up with ideas. Um, developers from hosting companies and, and podcasting apps and third-party services and and even and podcasters themselves. You have all these people that, that have joined in the party and that's what we expect podcasting to be led by. We want them to be, we want podcasting to be led by those people, not people at uh, billion dollar corporations. And so can that happen? I mean, is that is it possible? Uh, I guess the last couple of years says yes. Uh, it seems like it is possible. Hey, before before I pass it off to you, Greg, I do want to mention if you want to speak, don't be shy. Go ahead and request. But uh, there's also there's now a feature down there in the bottom right, the comments feature. So you have any questions or comments and you don't actually want to speak, you can uh, click down there and reply. Okay, Greg, I'll, I'll pass it off to you now. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I was just kind of curious how, um, you know, the podcasting 2.0 kind of namespace features or additions to the RSS, how have they been viewed by the Apples and Spotify's? Because, I mean, 
right now they control a giant chunk of the listener space. So I'm just trying to figure out how, you know, how that, you know, works, right? Because it seems like if you, if, if 10% of the listeners are on apps that support 2.0, you know, that isn't, I mean, that doesn't seem like it would move the needle. Hmm. Yeah, that's a fair question. But I think one, one way to look at it is if you go back, um, let's see if you go back, let's just say 12, 15 years, you had, you had Firefox, uh, that was, you know, just this small 1% of the browser market. And as web standards developed over time, uh, over the years, it slowly, there was just this slow groundswell of support as people saw the benefit of the standards as they were. And you had more and more adoption of it. And I said this, uh, I said this recently that I think, uh, I think it was, I forgot who I was talking to, but I absolutely think Apple and Spotify will both adopt uh, podcasting 2.0 features for different reasons. I think uh, Apple will ultimately adopt these features because um, they're good ideas and they make their products better. Um, and I think Apple at its core, yeah, we give them a hard time sometimes, but they they ultimately do want the best product uh, for their customers. Uh, Spotify, I think for a different reason, uh, I think that they will see that they need these features and it is easier to rely on a collective group, just like they've relied on, let's, let's be honest, Spotify has, has been the collective beneficiary of a bunch of free content. I mean, podcasting is, uh, an immediate win for them because it's loads of free content that they can just tap into and not have to pay for. And I think that also applies to podcasting 2.0. You have people doing the hard work of development and feature uh, and spec writing and testing, and they don't have to pay for that. They get the benefits, but they don't have to incur the costs. So I think, I think both of them will ultimately adopt it, but um, like with anything, it just takes time. Uh, but I'm confident. Jim, over to you. So I'm going to ask this question and talk to me like an idiot. And I'm an idiot because, well, I'm <laughs> unaware of podcast 2.0. So what is the, like, you've mentioned some things, but I'm still just a little fuzzy on try, what you're trying. Like, what's currently out there? What What are you doing today? That's like, different? are you, are, Jim, are you looking for like the killer features that you're, or, or? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, like I said, I'm just out to lunch of this whole thing. This is all new to me. So, <laughs> yeah. So, well, um, the, the, the features of podcasting 2.0 are things that are written up to be included by hosting companies and apps. So ultimately the, some of them are listener facing and some of them are going to be sort of back end things that the listener never sees. So for instance, uh, one of the features that we've developed is, uh, the ability to ship a transcript with your episode. So if you have, uh, host generated transcripts, like if uh, let's just say uh, your own host like Buzzsprout that offers that service, you could uh, generate your transcript, include it in your episode, and then Buzzsprout will ship that in the X in the RSS feed. Then podcasting, uh, then podcasting apps that support the transcript tag, which we developed, can go and read that transcript and display time stamped uh, captions in the app. Uh, so that's one feature that's listener facing. Another one would be uh, something like uh, cloud-based chapters. And so those are uh, chapters that are not embedded in the audio file, but are they live as a separate file uh, in the cloud so that you can modify the chapters without having to touch the audio. Uh, and for that's also would be a listener uh, listener facing feature and we uh, our show is a perfect example of the usefulness of something like that so uh, for instance uh, every friday on our show we do uh, we adam just puts a stub he creates a blank chapters file puts it into the episode and then uh, you our uh, our listeners use a tool called hypercatcher studio to go and crowd edit the chapters so they listen to the show 
and put chapter markers in for us. And then every time somebody puts a chapter marker in, it pops up in the podcasting apps. So that's a pretty powerful feature. It takes the burden of editing a whole bunch of chapters out of the hands of the podcaster if they don't want to do it themselves. So that's a couple of user-facing features. Then you look at something that's more of a back-end undercover feature. Uh, it would be something like Podping, which is a blockchain protocol to have rapid notification from hosting companies to podcast directories and apps that a feed has published a new episode. And that's something that, you know, that a listener's never going to see, but it has huge ramifications across the industry for speed and efficiency of feed polling to make open podcasting easier and cheaper. Jim, did that make any sense to you? Yeah, it cleaned it up quite, quite, quite well. Cause like I said, I'm totally out to lunch on this whole thing. And this is the first hand, first hand that I've seen about it. So I'm, I'm excited now that I know a little bit on the surface. So now I'll dig through it and find the rest awesome. of it. Well, Dave Jackson's up next. Maybe he'll ask a good question. We'll see. Well, the, the way you can kind of look at this is five years ago. Now I'm in Ohio, but five years ago, if I got a chicken sandwich anywhere, I did not get a pickle on my chicken sandwich. Chick-fil-A comes to town. Now every place I go, there's pickles on my chicken sandwich because people are like, oh, I, I, I know what that's like. I want that on my chicken sandwich. <laughs> and so podcasting 2.0 is it's like, like a Dave and I, it, well, they've made a spice rack. They made a spice rack, and the more people use those spices in their podcast, their audience is going to go, "Hey, like I noticed you have cloud chapters." Um, my this other podcast I used to do used to use Hindenburg to make the chapters in the MP3 file, but now we're doing dynamic content, and the chapters don't work anymore. Well, how do you fix that? Cloud-based chapters, and they go, "Oh, that's pretty cool." So it's all these little things. And it's really going, we have to get everybody talking about this. Like when the one dude from Spotify was like, huh, podcasting 2. Point what? And then Amazon's like, oh, we're going to do transcripts. And they're like, oh, cool, we've already got it made. And they're like, oh, we're going to do our own. We got to get people using the stuff that's already here. They don't know there's a spice rack. And then, oh, you want a little paprika? It's right here so that they can use the one so that when we go to adopt this everywhere, that everybody be using the same spices and then everybody be consistent in that whole nine yards. So, uh, but that's one example of a, a face for the, the end user. At first I did not get chapters. I'm like, why are we making this so hard? I can do them in Hindenburg and then dynamic content comes along and horks the whole thing. So, um, that's how I kind of view the features. Dang. I sense a bromance. They should be paying you to, uh, promote this Dave Jackson. Well, I, I'm actually getting ready to break more stuff. I came in, uh, I, I started a podcast called Leading the Bleeding, hence I didn't know what I was doing, and I kind of jumped in and broke everything. It was it was like one of the world's worst onboarding experiences ever, but I got it up and going, and I have since now bought the materials to build my own uh, little node, which I don't want to go too deep into that, but uh, I'm going to be breaking more stuff and um, reporting more on this, because I... I really do think in 10 years, we're going to be like, oh, I'm so glad we went through this to to build this because I, I think that's going to be, you know, it's it, in true Adam Curry fashion. He's about five years ahead of, of time, but uh, it's going to be great. Meanwhile, Mr. Dave Jackson's breaking things and all. Now I want is a pickle. So, Jeez. See what you did, Dave. Mr. Campbell, you are up, sir. The most hated man in podcast. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Thanks, guys. Uh, sorry I was late. I was on a rowing machine trying to get a PR and I... Didn't didn't do it, but I tried. Uh, I got some pr some practical questions. This is Dave, right? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Um, we're yeah. gonna have we're gonna have beer skis at, at PM, right? Uh, that's that's what I've been told. I've, <laughs> right, I've been prom I've been promised beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. Did your did your people talk to his people? How do you not know this? I don't know. We never know who's <laughs> on each other's DMs. Uh, okay, so there's there's some similarities here that I see between podcast 2.0 as far as adoption understanding that is similar to just in general web three and and nfts and that is uh that you know it just seems complicated i think a lot of people in this room might be scratching their head just a little bit um and with that in mind i've recently started experimenting with nfts and web three and building a couple of things buying stuff trying to figure it out just you know losing a lot of money frankly uh and something that struck me the other day was you know, this is 
Web3 has got some serious problems, but I think once it's all sorted and figured out, it ends up being something that is pretty uh, indispensable. And I think that the struggle that everybody's having with Web3 right now, especially the environmental stuff is, do I support it while it sucks so it can get to uh, what it will become if I support it while it sucks? Now, not to say that Podcast 2.0 sucks, uh, but to say that to use the Podcast 2.0 features really depends on one huge thing, and that seems to be finding a podcast host that will will adopt all of these great namespaces that you've created. Uh, but also, I'm wondering if you see there being like a, a runway of opportunity to get this thing stood up and functional and adopted broadly before all these closed systems kind of shore up the up and coming creator so that the up and coming creator is like, why would I fuck with any of that stuff? I'm creating on anchor and Spotify or exclusively an Apple. Is that a tension in your roadmap at all? Do you guys think of that? I, I don't personally think of it. The, the reason I don't think of it is because I think I would think about it more if they had shown, if the closed systems had shown this amazing track record of, um, bringing features swiftly to market but they but they don't that's they seem somehow incapable of bringing features compelling features in a timely manner i mean we we've so the podcast in 2.0 open source project has been around for uh two years this month and in that time we've had we've we've brought two new two new protocols and 17 namespace features in that same time span uh, from Spotify, we've gotten polls and Q and A, um, and maybe some advertising cards. And like, and and then we got something that you have to that you have to enter in, like some kind of colon URL into Safari to to play with or something. Like, they're just not they're just not doing anything. And so, if I, I would be, I, I would be worried. I think the tension would be there. And it would feel like, oh no, we need to rush and and do this before the closed systems take over. If they had shown that track record, but they just don't. And I honestly, it's it's baffling as to why they haven't done anything faster. Um, and the only thing I can think of is just that perhaps the passion is not there. I mean, we we do the podcasting two point project is is not. You know, it's not me and Adam. It's a collection of dozens and dozens and dozens of people, and that are active contributors that own. They really only care about this cool feature that they want to build and see it function in the marketplace. They're not. They're never going to get any money for this. And I think the passion, especially amongst developers, what what developers want is they want to make cool stuff and they want to see people be happy when they use it. That's what they want to see. And when you have a lean sort of group of, of developers that can push out changes very fast and immediately have feedback from, app de- from, from apps like Podverse, these smaller apps like Podverse and Castomatic, it's like they'll push an, they'll, they'll push an idea out and before you know it, Podverse has done it within a week and it's there and people are, you know, happy and they're getting great feedback. That sort of loop, that feedback loop, you don't get when you're in a huge company and you have uh, cycles and sprints and uh, lack of lack of feedback directly with customer. I just think there's a difference in mindset and I'm just, I'm just, I'm not worried about it. I, and especially with some of the conversations we've had lately with some of the uh, uh, bigger players in, in the podcast market, uh, they're excited about this stuff. And I, and I, I think, I think there's really not a risk there. I, I think the runway is really long. Fair. Uh, and the next, maybe my, my colleagues here might have some other questions. Uh, I have one more, uh, yeah. a conversation I had with whoever adverse app, uh, Twitter, Mitch. I don't know his Mitch. Uh, he pointed something out interesting to me that I didn't know, and that was that the, I'm not sure if you call it the tipping namespace or the support namespace. What is it called? Are you talking about the uh, the lightning stuff? Yeah. The value block. Yeah. 
the value block namespace, um, he explained to me that technically anything could be put into that namespace such that if I hit tip inside of an app, I wouldn't have to wrangle with the somewhat obtuse world of Web3 and cryptocurrencies. I could, in fact, put something like buy me a coffee in there such that when somebody pressed tip instead of tipping me in, you know, whatever quasi- <laughs> Uh, currency people on the internet are dealing with, uh, they could tip real dollars through an existing platform like Stripe. And I think some of, I can't remember if it was you, Dave, that said this, but it was somebody in that sphere of conversation that said, well, yes, that's true, but we would have to, like, we'd have to ask permission from Stripe. We'd have to ask permission from Buy Me a Coffee. We'd have to try to convince them, and we're not going to waste our time doing that because we're, we want to make progress moving forward with the expansion of this spec and creating a new namespaces and all these great things that you're doing. And that struck me, and I don't mean this in a callous way, but it struck me as a little single-minded that it seems like you would want somebody on your team to be trying to have those conversations because if all of a sudden somebody could tip using Stripe in a one-button solution or with Buy Me a Coffee or with Ko-Fi or with any of these other solutions that people seem to like, that that would help in the quicker adoption of the 2.0 spec. So the, the thing around that is we built, we built Lightning and focused on that because uh, it fit, it did all the things we wanted it to do. It was cheap. It was dirt. It's a transaction. You can send micro transactions uh, of just, a, you know, a, a penny at a time without fees. Uh, and it's a not it's anonymous it's encrypted um and so we and plus we were already already familiar with bitcoin so we, it had all the qualities that that adam and i needed to feel confident pushing forward with that so the initial value block specification it's on the namespace there's a full uh document that goes into detail about the format and the structure of the xml and what it should look like the reason we started with Lightning was because it had all those qualities, but we intentionally made the spec all along the way so that it could anything could be put in there. And thing, and to date, many people have come up and said something similar to what you're saying. Said, "Well, why didn't you do this? Well, why didn't you do that? Well, how about Ethereum? Uh, how about Hive? Uh, what about Cardano? What about, and and just the way you know? What about U.S. dollars in some fashion?" So the many people have asked that, and we have the same response every time. We say we did the we did the reference spec. It's already been it's already in use. Uh, broad, you know, broadly, there's uh, seven or eight apps that are using it. Uh, there's two host, hosting companies now that have Lightning support in the directly in the XML feed. So it's already in use. If you want to see something different in that value block, go modify the value block. It's open source. You can do it right there in the GitHub. Make the changes, write the appendix, and submit it, and then everybody will be able to use it. And to date, nobody has. And so I think the the issue there is not that um, it's up, you know, that it's it behooves us to go and do all these integrations to make everybody else's shit work. It's that Everybody thinks it's a great idea, but nobody actually wants to do it, which tells me that maybe the desire for it is not all that great. If you want buy me a coffee, maybe uh, you just use the existing stuff that already uses buy me a coffee. If you want something new and something that's that's more that's a little bit easier than buy me a coffee and cheaper, maybe that thing already exists in the form of the lightning. I mm, I don't know how fair that is because I think the person who's going to be directing what is the best thing to put in that block is going to be the listener who ultimately has to find it simple, easy, comforting, and familiar. And I don't think the listener knows Podcasting 2.0 exists to say, oh, I'll jump into GitHub and make it better. But I but I do get it's more it's a little bit easier than buy me a coffee and cheaper. Maybe that thing already exists in the form of the lightning. I, mm, I don't know how fair that is because I think the person who's going to be directing what is the best thing to put in that block is going to be the listener who ultimately has to find it simple, easy, comforting, and familiar. And I don't think the listener knows Podcasting 2.0 exists to say, oh, I'll jump into GitHub and make it better. But I, but I do get your point. 
And then I guess my last question, then I'll shut up because other people have their hand up. Uh, Dave and Jamingo uh, joined just a minute ago. Uh, how much of using the cryptocurrency within the apps has to do with trying to avoid the 15 to 30% that a host operating system might charge? Is that part of it? Uh, I guess I can only answer for myself. I never really thought of that because uh, because on the crypto side of things, I'm using crypto, the crypto term, you know, loosely, I guess, broadly on the crypto side of things. The app stores have been pretty hands off. They don't they have not really come at. There's lots of crypto wallets. There's lots of crypto. There's lots of crypto currency, currency activity going on in app store apps, and they don't seem to be very interested in it. And I think it's because legally, by definition, most cryptos, is, you know, Bitcoin for sure is classified as an asset. It's not a currency. So there's not to them. I don't see I don't think they see currency transactions happening. They see some other thing happening that doesn't affect them legally or monetarily. And so they just ever got involved. So a lot of like I said, there's a bunch of apps in the app store now that use uh, the lightning value for value spec and this they've never really had any feedback negatively from the app store guys so i don't it, it's not been in my mindset the biggest impetus um for me and adam at least was to make sure that nobody gets in the middle between the, the creator and the and the listener and the unless you want them to be so this it's the creator's decision whether or not they want to introduce somebody else into the mix between their listener and themselves in order to have a concrete pipeline from source to consumption the because if you if you introduce a third party a payment processor anybody else you saw this with github we just saw the tornado cash uh, repo taken offline, and the the developer of that product uh, take his account removed from GitHub. Uh, and every, whenever you see, whenever you introduce a third party, but a middleman, you always have the uh, possibility that you can be deplatformed, censored, whatever you want to say. So, in order to make that connection that financial connection between the creator and the consumer as robust and unblockable and undeplatformable as possible you need to have that payment network that you need to have that that direction that direct pipeline there it really wasn't about trying to get around some sort of 30 percent. i never even thought about that it's really about uh making it you know un, un unblockable i guess Okay, cool. Um, let's uh, thank you for answering that, Dave. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, 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 it off. I'm just yeah, trying to get to somebody yeah, sure. else. Uh, Melissa's had her hand up for a bit. Dave, uh, is, hold on. Hey, it's Dave Jackson, then Jamingo, then Melissa. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine'll mine'll be quick. It's just um, there are already what you just talked about, Tanner. Already exists. Uh, one, and here's the problem though. Nobody knows this exists unless you're listening to James Cridlin or somebody who does coding. But I know there's a, a bit of code that just says REL equals payment, and then you you put in an href to your whatever it wants to be, PayPal, buy me a coffee, whatever. But that only works, I think, in Overcast. Then there's one, and I think this is a 2.0 spec, podcast funding, where you just yeah, put right. in what – yeah, that one you can put in your PayPal, whatever. And that, again, in some apps will put a little dollar sign. I know in Castapod, I think it puts a little dollar sign. And then you have the value for value thing. So some of this exists, but the, I mean, there are a few. There's RSS.com, um, Castos. There are some of these that are, it's actually making it into the interface of the media host so that somebody can come in and they don't have to know the HTML to put it in. They just go, oh, here's my PayPal email address and behind the scenes it puts in that kind of stuff. So that's that's always going to be the biggest hurdle is adoption and people making it easy because it can't just be the nerds hacking their RSS feed if this is going to work. Yeah, it does seem like podcasters are the ones who are most interested in this stuff. I think we need to get listeners yeah. more interested. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm done. I'll pass it over to uh, Jamango. Hey, uh, listen, I love the idea of podcasting 2.0, but I'm a podcaster who's allergic to code. 
So every time I look over at Podcasting 2.0, I look over and I'm like, nope, not yet. It's not ready. So as a podcaster who doesn't code, where where would someone go to learn the least painless way to adopt 2.0 into their podcasting workflow and make some of this work? Is it ready for podcasters, the common podcaster yet? That's my I guess. Point. I guess it's the host, right, Dave? Yeah, the, some of it, some of it is not ready. Some of it is. Some of it is already there, and you and you can use it easily. So the way this this was talked about, uh, sort of in a different context, in the business context, you had for years when when cryptocurrency and blockchains first were developed, you had every business uh, consultant saying. Uh, you need to get involved in blockchain. You know, it's the future. And every after a while, everybody just started rolling their eyes. And so there was a blockchain and uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And you just heard these 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 phrases over and over and over. But really, that was never meant for businesses to mostly do directly. The way that you get the benefit of things like blockchain, machine learning, artificial intelligence is you use the applications and the software that the develop that developers have integrated into it. So if I'm an accounting firm and I want, do I need to go and hire a big uh, group of developers to develop artificial intelligence and machine learning apps for, for my business? No, I just wait for the line of business apps in the accounting world to integrate those things in for me. And then I just get the benefit of them by using their software packages. And I think it's the same way. And I know it's the same way in podcasting. The podcasting 2.0 project develops the specs and protocols that create, that enable these things to happen. And then uh, podcasters will use them as they become available when the podcast hosts and apps uh, integrate them. And that's when you know that they're ready is when they just show up. All right. So my question, okay. So, I realize that I'm, I don't know enough to know enough. So would this be more integrated in the podcast hosting? Like I would say Lipson or Blueberry, or would it be something where you would go somewhere else? Would it be more in the podcast apps that are using this? And then that's how you would implement this into the workflow. Well, sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, no, go for it. I was oh. going to say, J- Jamingo, the, so, so it's two parts. The way that the user, the listener, benefits from you using this is in the app. That's on the app side, which is why it's important for the apps to adopt it. Uh, but the part that you do so that those things can be used in the app is on the host side. So uh, Dave has already, both Dave's actually have mentioned, for example, rss.com, which is a hosting provider like Libsyn or Captivate or any of the others that have some of these features that you can already uh, set up so that they show up in apps that are currently using uh, these new namespaces. Did I get that right, Dave? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So then, I'm sorry, my last question, I, I know I have like three last questions. So my last question <laughs> is for Dave Dave Jackson, who works at Lipson. Will Lipson be in, integrating any of this soon into, because I'm a big Lipson fan, that's where I host most of my stuff, that's where my clients Post most of their stuff. Will they be implementing that this into into Lipson soon? Customer retention, oh, I for- Dave. Customer retention, get on it. Yeah, <laughs> I forget their uh, I forget their official statement. Um, it's something like we're watching everything because I'm I'm going to answer now as Dave Jackson from School of Podcasting, not Dave Jackson, Lipson employee. Basically, they're watching everything and they will decide. And the problem with some of the I don't want to say problem the uh, the situation with bigger companies is they have a roadmap, especially if you're rolling out other, I don't know if you're going around buying other companies and such, and you're trying to get them all to work together. That's not an easy task. So when somebody says, Hey, can you add this thing to the thing? Um, they've already allocated money and resources and such to that situation. So it's not that they're not going to do it. I just can't say when, but I do want to tell you, John, that by the end of this week, there's a tool called uh, Alby, A-L-B-Y, if you go to getalby.com. And what this does, this is the easy way to for the podcaster. 
So you go over, you get an Albi thing, and it gives you a bunch of gobbledygook. You're like, here's your thing, and here's your thing. Then you go over to podcastindex.org, you sign up, and you get this thing called a podcaster wallet. It says, hey, I need your RSS feed, and then I need this thing and this thing. And you're like, huh, that looks like the things that were in Albi. And you're like, yep, that's it. And you copy and paste and copy and paste, and you are done. It's really <laughs> that simple. You're really selling it, Dave. You go get the, well, thing, I'm here. the thing and you stick it in the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally there's two pieces of information that you so you have to sign up in two places. You copy and paste twice. And I just logged into mine and I can see that on Saturday, Scott from talkingbeards.com uh boosted me five thousand sats. He said, Hey, thanks for covering this topic. So now the the kind of sad thing is, but it's good. We're not complaining, is when you convert five thousand sats to you know money, it's like not as much as you maybe hope, but it's a <laughs> why start. Why'd you tell him? Why'd you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and no, but here's the thing. Again, fast forward five years from now, when you've got a big chunk of your audience doing this and it's the norm, now and plus, who knows what Bitcoin's going to be at that point? It's going to be really cool. So, but right now, and that's why the uh, the video I have right now shows a system that used Telegram. So you had to install Telegram. And Alby doesn't do that. It makes it easy. It's sign up twice, copy paste twice. You're done. Yeah. Well, if you're talking, to, I'm sorry. If you're talking about the value stuff, you know, on the the value stuff is the Bitcoin Lightning part of, of podcasting 2.0. And I like to always be clear that podcasting 2.0 is way bigger than just the just Bitcoin and Lightning. But if you're, you know, if we're talking specifically about that, um, and you want to see not what it could be. But what it is actually now, uh, our show every Friday, we get lots and lots of donations through uh, the value, through value for value through the Lightning Network. We get uh, Adam looked at the uh, he did an export from our node today, and we're getting about four million sats a month. So that's about a thousand dollars a month in donations directly through the apps. Uh, that's there's no U.S. dollars involved at all, and we got uh, one donation last month. We got five million sats in one go, so that was a little over a thousand dollars. All just boom, one it came in right during the middle of the show. So it's not it's this isn't like I, I'm guessing what I'm trying to say is it's not all aspirational. Like maybe one day, ten years from now, we'll all be making some money. No, no, it's actually happening right now, and it's just a matter of how much you commit to it because value for value value for value is more than just hooking up a wallet and then watching money roll in. That's not how it works. That's not how it will ever work. Value for value. If that is the goal of your show, if that's what you want to do with your show, there's a system that has to be put into place where you enable that feature, that, that feature to be there. You enable the SATs to come in uh, by enabling the value block and the wallets and that kind of thing. But that's only the first part of it. Then you have to integrate it into the show because what, pe what people want is to give value back to you um, and you have to give them the channel in which to do that. They want to be a participant in the show. So the value for value loop is what you call it. And you get you you make it available you take you ask them to give you back value and then when they give that back to you you use that as content in the show and that begins it creates a feedback loop where other people other listeners hear notes that's being read on the show they hear donation amounts and it's i think we're so used to being afraid to ask people for money uh, we think that if a listener hears that another, if a listener hears a donation of like a thousand dollars, we're afraid as the podcaster that, oh, they heard that somebody gave me a thousand dollars. They're going to think I don't need any more money. And so nobody else is going to donate. It's actually psychologically what we, what we found is it's the complete opposite. When somebody hears you get a thousand dollar donation, it makes them feel guilty for not giving you anything. They've been listening to you and essentially mooching your content for free. And so they want to step up to the plate and they're like, well, if this guy gave a thousand bucks, I can at least come off the wallet for 20. And so it has this sort of opposite social effect, uh, psychological effect, but you have to, 
but none of it works unless you integrate it into the show. That's the key part of everything that most people miss when they try to implement value for value. They're like, I hook up the wallet, but I'm not getting any money. Well, you're not getting any money because you didn't ask for it and you're not doing the value for value loop. Thanks, gentlemen. Podcasting Power Hour is part of Indie Drop-In Network. If you are a podcaster looking to grow your listeners, check out IndieDropIn.com. Indie Drop-In is always free, and we have opportunities right now for comedy, true crime, scary, and paranormal podcasts. Just go to IndieDropIn.com to learn more. Melissa, you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, but I think I'm <laughs> pretty much way behind everyone. Um, because I just want to start a podcast. I have no clue what I'm doing. When you guys are talking coding, um, I, I work in clinical trials. So like, that's my scientific knowledge. However, um, my late friend, Andy Gross, um, he developed some, I don't know, REAC school some kind of code and tried to help me with it and I this was years ago and I, I just um, and also I'll probably get kicked off because I thought until I heard my mom and brother have a fight over it on Easter that NFTs were made up by um, South Park post COVID <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, my simple question is like where did you guys start because you know I, I do understand I mean, I guess I can learn because I, I can understand AI as far as like clinical trials. I can understand, you know, but what is an easy way to just start? I mean, where did you guys start? That's Coolpodcasting.com. That's where you go. Yeah. yeah. So, so hold on. Um, there, are, there are a few people up here that could plug some things to sell you some things to help you with that. So I want to kind of avoid doing that. Well, I don't have, I don't have any, that's the thing, right? Like right now I, I, and that's the thing, like I'm a single mom. I don't have any money to, you know, buy anything, right. but you know, I think pe people will donate when their 18 year old son has a mullet like that is the reason <laughs> to donate to me. <laughs> uh, um, I just, I, but honestly though, where, like, where do I start? Oh boy. Uh, you guys, I really don't want to tell her to like download the anchor app and just mutts around until she figures out and learns better. Uh, but now let's, let's back up before that. Why are you starting a podcast? Oh like, no, not this. <laughs> no. Oh, I, can do, I can do it quickly. I can do it quickly. I'm starting a podcast because I right now I'm watching so many people go into a deep depression because of what's going on in the world. It's confusing to kids. It's confusing to freaking everyone. You know, I have my son, when I'm reading The Night Before Christmas a couple of years ago, stopping me and asking me why Santa doesn't bring AK-47s to North Korea to let them shoot their way out of concentration camps. Like, there's so much going on. And I just, you know, I have a funny life. Like, my, I have, a, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, like we all are, but I just, I don't know, I guess... I, my way of dealing with things is laughing at them. And everyone has been telling me in my life, um, except for my family, because my mom doesn't think it's funny, anything I say. <laughs> but, um, you know, to start a podcast, because it's just, I, I just think we're all kind of in this together and people are being, you know, a-holes to everyone. And there's no reason for it. <clears throat> okay, so. So Melissa, here's you tell no one I did this. Okay. I have, a, I have a reputation as an asshole, and I have to keep it. But I, uh, I'm too. I am too. Don't worry. Don't I worry. Uh, well, perfect. This will work out wonderfully. Uh, I have an accelerator that starts on September fourth. It's five hundred and forty bucks. If you DM me, I'll just put you in it because I've got ten spots left out of twenty, and I don't think I'll fill the remaining ten before it Thank starts. Thank you so, so much. Now listen, listen. Literally, don't tell anybody I did that. And secondly, you got to show up for it. It's you know. I will. You got to do the work. Are you kidding? I will. Okay. Tanner's still an I asshole. really, really appreciate it. Tanner's still an asshole. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate and, it. And believe me, everyone, th everyone thinks I'm an a-hole because I always speak the truth. Like, I always, even in my family, like, you know, I'm always the one who, it, it just in general, like, I think so many people are, are so, um, even, you know, you see these young, like, startup um, people giving advice to everyone and it's so dumb. It's like simple advice. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's nothing deep or 
I don't know. Well, you'll fit right in. I don't say anything deep. So just DM me, Melissa, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I really, really appreciate it. Well, that's a good reminder that if you ever miss one of these podcasting power hours, you can download it in podcast form after the fact, and you can hear Tanner give away his classes for all of eternity. <laughs> and hijack the uh, space. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, podcastingpowerhour.com. Thanks, Tanner. Tanner, thank you. Hey, Tanny, that is very nice of you. And that's why we do these uh, spaces. You know, don't be afraid to come up and ask. I mean, that's, that's why we do this. So it was really good meeting you. You as well. Thank you so much, honestly. Dave Jackson's your hand. Oh, your hand's not up anymore. Yeah. Well, now wait a minute. We got we got good pods in here. I wonder if that's Queen Good Pods herself. I wonder if uh, she's thinking about putting in some podcast 2.0. Probably can, but they haven't. <clears throat> I'll send them an invite. All right. So Dave Jones, uh, I mean, question wasn't directly to you, but do you have anything to comment on Melissa? Oh, uh, probably not. I mean, I think she's got a lot bigger fish to fry than uh, podcasting 2.0 at the moment. <laughs> but I think she's got her somewhere, you right? You think? <laughs> yeah. We all start somewhere, yeah. though. I, yeah, I guess I would say um, if you start to stick with it for a while, don't bail out too don't bail out too fast if you get dis- if you start to get discouraged or uh, you know or run against run up against a rough spot because there's you know, pod fade is, is, is a real thing. And it, it, if you push through, you'll get better at it and get more confident. Um, I think that, I think I would say that cause there, there's not every week that you show up, uh, you, not every time you feel great. And sometimes you, you, you hit publish and you're just like, nah, I just wasn't all that good. But it's funny. Those weeks, sometimes those are the weeks you get the best feedback. And I still not figured that out. It's like sometimes away from a podcast thinking, oh, that was that was fantastic. I mean, we, man, we really knocked it out of the park and it's just crickets. You know, nobody says anything. And the next week we don't get very many donations. And then the next week I'm like, eh, that was average. That was just okay. And then we get this great feedback. And we get tons of donations. I just, you know, who knows? Who knows what the list, what the, the psychology of the listener is? I have, I actually have one more question. Do I have to take donations in crypto form? No. Yes, you have to do that. Yes. Okay. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> D- Dave, can I tell you something real quick? My, my, girl, my girlfriend's sitting here on the bed with me. She's eating her dinner and you're talking and she goes, Is that Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right. On. All right. Yeah. So, there Melissa, let me go back. Uh, Melissa, let me go back to your last question. You, you asked about taking donations. So is the goal of your passion project? It's a little bit of both, I, I guess. But right. I, do need, I do need to make money. Sounds then, like there's okay. a mullet that needs some attention. Oh, my God. Yeah. It, it was, I, you don't even know. You don't, he, well, looks like a, he looks like Ellen DeGeneres had a baby <laughs> with Joe Dirt. It's awful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, then to, to kind of bring it back to a little bit about what we're talking tonight, it doesn't matter how you get the money, you have to deliver value. So that's where I was going back to all my questions of like, okay, we know why you want to start a podcast. Who is this for? Because it can't be for everybody. And then you have to figure out who that person is in a crystal clear picture and then give them what they want. And if you want them to give you money, you have to solve a problem for them. So like with the No Agenda show, I get stuff about the media that makes me want to punch my tv because i'm like i'm hearing about how congress is just screwing the the american citizen and i turn on the tv and they're like kim kardashian wore a red dress on the you know red carpet last night i'm like why are we talking about this so they're giving me something i can't find with podcasting 2.0 they are giving me information that i can't find anyplace else because they are the origin of the information so you have to give people something they want enough to where they will then want to give it back. It's it's the well, law no, of rest. Not to interrupt, but I mean, That's I all right. can't, not to be it, like, I don't know how personal to go, but I mean, I could even, you know, I have a little girl, I have four kids. 
Um, and my three eldest are, my teenagers are from my ex-husband, my baby, her father, you know, I'm getting his rights terminated, um, unfortunately. And he owes $30,000 and his mom works in the courts. And I, I mean, I could talk about, I could talk all day about the injustice in the court system. It's, I mean, right. if I, you well, know what I mean? The other thing about making money with a podcast and everybody loves to skip the step <laughs> is and this it is doesn't where, happen. Yeah, it, well, here's the thing, uh, and this is where I put on my Dave Jackson Dream Crusher hat, uh, and it's just the truth. Step one is grow an audience. You cannot monetize in any form, whether it's crypto or regular or PayPal or buy me a coffee. If you don't have an audience, there's nothing to monetize, and so you have to do something to grow that audience. And that can, and nobody wants to hear this. When I researched it, it takes years to grow an audience that's going to give you any kind of value back to where it's going to make a difference. And people are like, well, I wanted to quit my job in six weeks. And I'm like, it just doesn't work that way. I wish it did, but it's going to take a little while. So uh, I, I say that again, not to crush your dream, your dreams, but just so you come in realistic. That's why I always say you have to be super passionate about your project because when you first start off, and like right now, I'm starting a podcast about the city I live in. I'm getting 28 downloads, okay? But I want to see this through, and it's an experiment, and I'm passionate about trying some things with it. So I'm pushing through, even though I'm getting less than you know 30 downloads an episode. But I'm, I'm playing, and I'm trying something. So you need that passion to push through when you first start, because it takes a while to build up that audience. A good analog here, Melissa, is that <clears throat> if you – so I would say if you need money, a podcast is not – is not plan A. <laughs> it shouldn't be plan A. Well, no, it's gonna. Uh, but, it's actually gonna be like my plan B. It's like my fun thing. Well, well, it is similar to just to give you an idea of how difficult it is to actually make, let's just say, a living wage. Which I don't know. Different people will define that differently. I think of it as like fifteen bucks an hour, forty hours a week. I think that's a minimally livable wage. Um, in order to th th doing that in podcasting is a lot like doing that if you are someone who paints and wants to make money being a painter. I mean, it's, it's very much an artistic vein of, I mean, unless you have a business and you're using it for content marketing, but most podcasters are creating something as if they were a painter and their canvas is, you know, the DAW and their medium is sound. Uh, so it's, it is as difficult, perhaps more difficult uh, than becoming a painting, a painter and making money. So uh, Dave's just trying to, to temper you a little bit here. It's, it's it's not something that you're going to turn any kind of significant profit in, you know, in a matter of months. Not to say that there aren't people who get stupid lucky. That happens. Uh, but but to enter into the whole endeavor, assuming that it will happen to you, is not a good plan. Not that that's what you're doing, but just to make that clear. And like one more. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. No, go ahead. Well, one point I wanted to bring up on this to kind of bring back what Dave was talking about is the other day I used Castapod. It looks just like Overcast, except it's enabled to stream Satoshis to people. And I looked down and I noticed, I forget what it says, it said insufficient funds. And I was like, oh, holy crap, I've been listening to podcasts for like a day and a half and not giving any value back. And I really felt like, oh, you are a, a, a piece of crap. You're listening to stuff for free. Once you get used to kind of paying for it, you have this fun, it, it's a totally different listening experience. And working for Libsyn, we own a company called Glow. And I think it's like the Jim and Julie show or something like that. And I've seen it twice with that show where they're like, hey, we signed up for the X amount of money per month. How do we give them more money? Because they only have the one plan. And Adam Curry said my favorite thing. He said, never put a limit on how much your audience can give you. So it's one of those things, once you get them giving you some sort of value back, it's great because they get used to it. But it's it takes a little, uh, again, it takes value, determination, and some patience to get them giving it to you in the first place. But it's, uh, you know, and I've heard... Um, Dave, talk about the guy that sent a, like a boatload of money in cash. <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah. One of our listeners sent uh, sent in a donation in cash. Uh, it was like four thousand uh, dollars to Adam's PO box, and it was just like, here, I, I believe in what you're doing, and I want, you know, I want this to, I want this to happen. And we, you know, there's, I don't, I'm not going to say the name of the podcast, but. Uh, you know, I pay for it. I try to pay for everything that I can. <clears throat> and so, 
Uh, I mean, Tanner knows this. I subscribed to his Substack and uh, you know donated uh, to uh, to quite a few people in podcast. If I get some value from from something that you do or write or your podcast, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something back from it. And the the this podcast that I was talking about a while ago, I went to subscribe on their uh, Patreon, and this is a podcast i love dearly it's thoroughly researched it's so well done and i was so surprised at the low amounts the subscription levels were like five dollars seven dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars and it was like because in these they were labeled as like uh you know gold supporter diamond supporter and it's like the diamond level was like twenty dollars i was like holy cow this is so low and it, it, it I, I kept thinking these numbers should be way higher than this, and so I just said, "Screw it! I'm, I'm going to just set up a uh, a thing on on my Lightning, and I'm just going to donate directly uh, to this podcaster uh, way way more than this because I literally didn't have the option through the subscription page to give them more money. And I'm like, and I value. I said and thought about, okay, what's the value I get from this podcast? It's at least 25 bucks a month worth of value that I get. And so I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. 25 bucks a month. And that put me into like, you know, the, the super, super triple diamond level supporter. <laughs> so yeah, that that's a very important thing. Never, never artificially limit what your audience can give you. All right. Special shout out to Adam Curry. Thank you for joining us. The man, the myth, the legend. We do have oh, a few speakers. That laser eyes. Yeah. He laser. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few more people here. We're running over. I want to make sure who who I've accepted. We get to them. Ooh, I don't really know the order. So Ed, we'll go to you. Then Good Pods. Then Jesse. Speak, Eduardo. All right. Anyway, so um, I want to talk to Melissa, uh, podcaster, podcaster, independent podcaster to independent podcaster, one person crew to one person crew. Who uh, I've been doing this for about three years now. Um, the first year I did it, I had no idea what the hell I was doing, and uh, I actually gave up after about uh, five episodes, which is typical. And uh, I came back to it right before the pandemic, and uh, I did it for about a year. I stopped for a while again. But the second time that I stopped, I had people like Jeff in my corner who were uh, constantly on me to keep going, that I had some value to what I was doing. And... Um, in the first year that I was podcasting, I got less than a thousand listens in the first 12 months. By the time I got to the second year, I was at about 3,000. I just did, I just hit my third anniversary last month. I'm about to hit 10,000 downloads. Um, I haven't done it with uh, any financial support from supporters, or, or I've never asked for money before. I just only set up a buy me a coffee last month at Tanner's. Uh, uh, high suggestion. Don't be afraid to, to take time off and rethink if things aren't working for you. But what has worked for me more than anything else is being a part of this community, this, this Twitter podcast independent community, having people like Jeff and Tanner and Greg and Jim telling me the things that I need to hear when I need to hear them to keep me motivated and sometimes even piss me off because sometimes I need a good pissing off to break me through to the next level. So no matter what, just don't be afraid that you don't know what you're doing because you will learn from all of these people because they are such a wealth of information. So don't be afraid. Keep going. And if you ever have any questions, these guys are great and they will absolutely be there to help you if you ask. Uh, Thank I love you. Guys. I love these guys so much because they have helped me so much. Um, just, just keep going. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. Beautiful, Ed. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, podcasting is very difficult, but I know there were people that I'm sure well, Greg Tanner would agree. People that helped me along the way. So I probably all right. Good pods is up. Uh, I don't know if they really requested. I sent them a request. <laughs> Ken, are you? Is it you, Ken? Hey, it's uh, it is me, Ken. How are you guys? 
you go. Inquiring minds want to know when are you going to put the spec, the 2.0 spec in the app? When? I, when? I love that they're like just getting ready to launch their desktop version of their app and we're like more fix it now. Oh, so, so that is, that's the answer I was going to give you, Tanner. I appreciate <laughs> that. So, oh my God, our heads have been down building out the, the desktop version of this app. So for the last many months, it's a big project. So we have a very, um, I guess, uh, limited featured version of the desktop coming out in a couple days. And then we'll be building in more and more of the features that you see on the app over the next, I'd say, two and a half months. And then we will pick our heads up and absolutely are interested in and want to add, you know, a bunch of the podcasting 2.0 technology into, into the, into the app and the website. So that will be, that'll be coming. Awesome. Yeah. We've definitely been keeping our eye on it. It's just that, uh, man, there's just so much to do. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's a chicken and egg thing always in podcasting. Everybody knows this. It's because you have two sides, you have the hosting side and you have the app side. And so, uh, the question is always, how do you break the chicken and the egg? And the, the, you have to pick one or the other. We, decided to pick the hosting company side so we just have spent the last two years just making uh, great relationships with the hosting companies and just uh, really focusing on cultivating that side of things so that by the time that app developers got got around to a cycle where they could spend some dev time to it they would already have loads of content in which there was already pieces of 2.0 in there mm-hmm. so that there was content to work with so that they weren't blindly building in features and then sort of hoping upon hope that a host would someday support it. So there's almost, there's, there's about 400,000 feeds right now that we have that have uh, at least one podcasting 2.0 feature in it. Uh, probably about, there's going to be close to half a million feeds that declare the namespace by the end of the year. So there's, there's now by focusing on that though on the hosting side we we were able to get a corpus of of material out there where the apps could have some confidence to go forward and spend some developer hours on it. Yeah, I think it's a good strategy. It um, I, it shouldn't be too complicated for us. Again, we just need to pick our heads up after we finish the uh, the desktop version. That'd be great. Baby steps, Ken. Baby steps. <laughs> no, okay. So we have. Okay, yeah, we have time. We'll just go ahead and finish up here with the last person for we kind of closing thoughts and close it out. Jesse, go ahead. Um, I actually just wanted to ask really quick. I've asked this a few times, but unfortunately, I didn't take notes. Um, I wanted to get started on a podcast that I've got like fleshed out and ready to go. I want a one stop shop on an iPhone. Does anybody have any recommendations? I literally just want to open up this app, push record, and then be able to make, maybe do some edits from there and then publish it by pushing a second button. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh my God. He's like the perfect guy for my, all my naysaying and warnings. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, I mean, there are apps that'll do that, Jesse. Do you want to be able to edit it? Um, the thing is, is I would rather just start over if it gets to be that bad of a flub or whatever. And even if it's a 35, 40 minute thing, I'm good to go. Uh, or at least I think I will be. And I realize I say that like from this end of it, and I'm sure, I'm sure They'll come like tw- minute twenty twenty nine out of a out of a thirty five minute thing where I'm like, God damn it, I'm such an idiot. Um, but I'm willing to gamble. I'd be just for the sheer fact that I know that any extra steps that I put between myself and pushing that button is just more time lost. As opposed to if it's just there, then I'll spend the day just making sure that it's perfect and then just push the goddamn button and it'll just be done. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, just, just go for it, man. I mean, get something like Anchor, and I'm not one. You know, Tan- Tanner will tell you there's definitions or things that you have to follow here but i would just get something like anchor and just try it out and if you like it then you can take more of the approach of you know splitting it out just from the one app and legitimizing it go ahead tanner yeah anchor is the i mean you're looking for the one-stop way to do it anchor is the way to do it but the thing is that anchor is gonna as you grow and get better and get smarter forever if you don't care about your hosting provider but creating in that way 
you'll say, no, I can do better if I have a DAW, DAW. No, I can do better if I, you know, if I can record in multi-track. No, I can do better if I can learn how to use a compressor and a denoiser. And I mean, but if you're just going to get into it to figure out if you like it, a lot of people bash approaching it the anchor way. But I mean, if it's the filter that determines whether or not you take it more seriously, I don't have a problem sending people to anchor. Yeah, don't go out and spend a bunch of money so you know you enjoy it. I mean, that's right. the- yeah, that, and that's so important too. Uh, but honestly, I think for me, ease of access is more important than effort. You know what I mean? Um, like, and I realize that there's a bunch of effort that goes into doing it in the traditional way, like all the efforts in the post, or at least most of it. Um, but like I said, I also know what's going to bog me down, and it's all that all those extra steps. If I can, ju- if anger just lets me try it and give it a go then yeah, it's exactly what Tanner was saying. Like that'll, that'll determine whether or not I, I get into it more seriously or not for sure. Jesse, here's an even easier way. <laughs> Go on. Pick out, pick out your phone, find okay. the voice memo, okay. pretend it's anchor and right. hit record <laughs> and then just, and then just talk and then you'll get done and you'll be like, okay, that was 40 minutes. Do you think that would, you know, if it would, I, if, would I have put that out in the public or not? If, if so, well then you've just figured out, I have something to say. You know, I once moved across a parking lot. I moved from here to there. It was like 70 feet. It was, it was during Mo- a homeless time in his life. He didn't right, exactly. live on the south <laughs> of the parking lot anymore. I, I'm here to say that just moving anywhere in podcasting, even though it's just redirect the feed and important, it just, just start in the right place. I'm, I'm not a fan of Anchor in any way. And if you're just trying to figure out if it's if it's too hard to push a button on on Audacity, then just record into your phone. And just pretend it's anchor, and that will let you know that that should solve that problem. Can I talk for forty minutes into my phone? Well, because that sounds what you're. I, you know, I, not, I love that Dave's advice. Talk for forty minutes uninterrupted. That's the issue because the thing is, is I actually have tremendously severe ADHD, and then a widespread of interests that cover a number of topics. And I've researched extensively for a number of years by reading dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands, of books on those same subjects. That I've actually absorbed a significant amount of information for. That I can't wait to be able to turn around and actually redistribute in a way that is accessible and approachable by the masses. Which, as we all know, audiobooks super easy to do. Plus, a podcast super easy to do. So when I say, believe me, can I get going and talking? Hold Holy fuck, am I not concerned about it? Yeah. What's more, well, just re- I also know that just, this is the voice I should probably be doing it in rather than the full ADHD speed. And on nah, be yourself. To practice it like this is probably pretty good. Yeah. As somebody who himself has pr- never been diagnosed, but I'm all I'm ricochet rabbit. Uh more planning equals less editing. No planning, lots of editing. And that will solve a lot of your problems too. So Dave Jackson's advice was just like, hey, you want to become a professional mountain climber? I'll tell you what you do. You go to the playground and you get on the jungle gym. That tracks. That's well, he was saying that was he was saying it was, you know, audacity was too much of a hurdle. So I'm like, well, all right, what's easier than audacity? Talk into your phone. Can I ask if uh, if trying just like little like improv three minute TikTok things would be like about the equivalent type of experience in your opinion? Like, will that be about the same or is, is because there's the, the extra film element will that not quite get poured over doing that then you might like doing more touche yeah oh. content creation is content creation the bottom yeah. line is just don't be boring also that's touche that's well thank you very much I, I feel like it's taken up a, a lot of space uh but i also got pretty much exactly the direction i was hoping to get and by that i mean like information and feedback so thank you all very much a three-minute podcast is there's nothing wrong with that at all uh, there's a podcast uh the uh daily like a daily cybersecurity news podcast that i listened to from the uh internet storm center that i listened to I, i've been listening to that thing for for years now and it's like five minutes every morning really? it's awesome well shit i think that's exactly what i'm going to do to give it a try then it's just a little three minute random tiktok podcast thank you so much uh, i love the idea that there's a three minute cyber security podcast is it just somebody screaming we're fucked for a sustained three minutes step one <laughs> don't get hacked that's it there's no step two turn off your computers now the end Okay, Don't five use minutes, password as your six. password. Don't use password as your password. You have something else, Dave Jones? Uh, no, no, I'm good. Okay, we'll we'll go ahead and go through here. We're we're over, which is no problem. I appreciate everybody for hanging out past the uh, top of the hour, and it's nice to meet you, Jesse, and then some of the other people that are new to the space and debating on getting into podcasting. That's why we do this. We'll go around for closing thoughts and put a book into this. I think for me, it's really I have two things. The first is. I think there's definitely in Jamingo and the people are commenting throughout this Twitter space, highlighting the fact that there's definitely more need of an educational piece for 
the work, the great work that you and uh, Adam are doing, Dave Jones. Sorry, there's a lot of Daves going on around here. I just think uh, it just to me, it just shows that the there's a gap between understanding what you all are doing. And I think this has been a very educational space. So I appreciate you taking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If, uh, if anybody, uh, we'll, you know, we'll be doing a presentation on this at podcast movement and I hope that helps people to, and, uh, encourage people to come and, and see that we'll be going through every single feature. Adam's going to start off with, uh, with a whole, um, presentation about value for value, how to do it the correct way. And then, um, we're literally just going through every single feature and giving a, giving a thumbnail sketch of how it works and what it looks like. So, uh, definitely come to that. And if I'm, if anybody, uh, you know, sees me at podcast movement, I'm always happy to chat for a while or do a beer or whatever. Awesome. And my second thing is, it's a question for Melissa. Is this haircut of your son similar to Dave Jackson's down there in that picture? I think it is. Um, so I didn't mean to insult you. The mullet. <laughs> It's a mall. He can't. Well, he goes to this barber and he walks in and comes out two seconds later with a mullet and he goes, "How do you like it?" And I was like, "I, I just I couldn't stop laughing." And it's because he likes the way it looks under his football helmet, and also some girl likes it. So, but yes, mm-hmm. it does. It does look a little bit like Dave's and David. Look, you you rock it a lot better than my son. I don't think there's a mullet in that picture. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to look. She was talking about the Ella DeGeneres top half. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, there sorry, you go. Uncle, just kidding. Sorry, just Uncle kidding. Dave. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> all right, Greg, what do you got for closing thoughts? Thanks, guys. Thanks, Melissa. Um, no, I think that uh, I was actually really excited um, to hear from you, Dave, and, and learn more about uh, Podcasting 2.0 because – you know, I think it kind of gets a bad rap because, you know, the value for value gets wrapped into like the core, um, you know, the like the core of it. And then you have this kind of religious debate about crypto and or not crypto. Is it good? Is it bad? And it, it's kind of lumped into that. And I, I, I like to hear about all the other stuff that makes it great and all the other good work that you're doing, because that's just one thing. It's it's a it's a you know, a good thing and complex thing and an important thing, but it's only one thing. So, um, I really appreciated hearing about that. Okay. The most hated man in podcasting, Tanny Campbell. What are you closing? Why why do you encourage it? (laughs) Um, you know, I came in late. I wish I hadn't. I'm sure I probably missed 10 or 15 minutes worth of good conversation. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Dave, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you at podcast movement, um, to chit chat about, some of the things we've already talked about in DM, but also some of the stuff we talked about here, because I'd like to be a, you know, I'd like to find a way to be an advocate for moving the spec forward or moving the work forward, even though I'm not, you know, I'm not a coder of any kind, so I can't help you in that department. Uh, but it'll be interesting to get to talk to you and hopefully I can lend a hand in some meaningful way or at least learn better. Uh, and I just enjoyed hearing some of your answers. I hope I didn't put you, put, put anything to you too hard. No, no, not at all. Absolutely not. It's great. Jim Mallard. I'll echo some of the thoughts that I've already heard, but I'm also, I'm going to pick one very specific thing and mention this. And I think it's kind of not to be lost and maybe I'm out the lunch, but maybe I'm not. When, when we're starting to add transcriptions that make shows more discoverable, discoverable, which will be good for people besides Joe Rogan. Well said. Hall of Famer, my good friend, Dave Jackson. What are your closing thoughts, man? Well, number one, uh, newpodcastapps.com is uh, where you need to go so that you can uh, start streaming sats to your favorite podcast. And I had one other point, and it, I had it, and then it went away. So it must not have been that important. But uh, uh, thanks for having me. Always great to talk about this and uh, look forward to sitting in on Dave's presentation of Podcast Movement. You're getting old on me, Dave. Damn. That's it. I had it, man. It was right there, and it was like, boom. You said, all right, Hall of Famer, and I laughed, and it was like, went right out the window. Well, I, have to be <laughs> you one I fall in, and I can't get up just to keep you safe. That's it. Now, Dave Jones, we'll give you – I know you just kind of went on a, a small plug there, but I do want to give everybody in, a, in here listening the opportunity to hear about where to find all the awesome stuff that you're doing. Uh, yeah, probably for uh, anybody that's – a developer, uh, the best place is go to podcastindex.social. 
Uh, if you need an invite for that, uh, we had to close it up and do an invite thing because it's uh, it just started getting hit with spammers. But if you uh, want to join in, there's lots of developers there from the hosting side uh, and from the app side. And it's a very open place that shares code and ideas all the time about podcasting 2.0. Uh, hit me up, Dave, at podcastindex.org is my email address, and I'll send you an invite. Uh, would love to have you if you're a podcaster. Uh, just keep uh, keep your eyes peeled with your hosting company. Uh, let them know that you want some of this stuff uh, in an easy way. Uh, if you're going to be a podcast movement, uh, come see the talk uh, and uh, grab me in the hall, whatever you need. Um, but, yeah, just join, uh, join in those places, and uh, we do all of our work in the open. Nothing's hidden. Uh, if you want to download the entire index feed database you can do that it's right on the home page of uh, podcast podcastindex.org uh, so everything's uh, open and free and just participate however you want to again man it was very nice for you taking the time to do this and uh thank you for contributing you know you and adam curry and the team for all you're doing for podcasts and so i appreciate it yeah thanks a lot for having me appreciate it no problem still losing my voice for from uh the covid here greg take us home Thanks a lot for everybody coming. If you want to uh, re-listen to this show or listen to past shows, you can go to podcastingpowerhour.com and it's at this same time. So if you're here late, we started at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, Tanner, if you came at 9.15, we did start at 9. So, uh, yeah. yeah. You piece of shit. Can you be on time next time? <laughs> no, no. i just using you as a as a way to remind everyone else. So thank you for being a good sport and uh, we'll see you next week. Be good, be safe and don't litter and unfollow Tanner Campbell. If you're following him, please. <laughs> oh, I love you. you shithead. Thank you for listening to the podcasting power hour. Everyone is free to participate on Twitter spaces every Monday at 9 PM. Eastern time to join. Just follow Jeff at podcast underscore father or greg at indie drop in if you found this podcast helpful go into your podcast app and write a quick review other podcasters will see it and know this show is worth listening to also i'll put a few links in the show notes for ways you can support the show i think by now you know we love our coffee have a great week